the mics we put up is what I have found to work better. You know, as far as close micing goes, it's pretty standard of 57 on the snare and uh, I, I prefer a Sennheiser 421 on the bottom of the snare. My favorite uh, for bass drum has, I think it's 15 years ago since I bought it, the Sennheiser 602, which to me gives me everything I need in a bass drum. And then I have the flat to put on the bottom inside of the bass drum, uh, also Sennheiser 902. It's, it's so different to the other one that you can really find some parts of the sound you like to enhance or get rid of. I would usually, in, in the normal world, go for Shure 57s on Toms or 421s from Sennheiser, but I found these Chinese uh, mics that I really like for the Toms. I use Erlund uh, microphones for the overheads, which I find to be really, not bright, but it's like a really nice open sound, which I really like for overheads. And we use Octavus for the Russian mics, MK12 for close miking those support hi-hat ride splash cymbals that you need to make sure you bring up. Snare micing, I, I've always done uh, two mics. Um, sometimes I do a side mic, you know, and capture just the rim with a large diaphragm condenser or something like that. But this time, this is probably my favorite setup. I use a Telefunken M80, which is my current favorite top snare mic. Really amazing mic, great sound, awesome rejection between the hats and the cymbals. And then a Cam 184. Um, I'll use either use a 184 or an 84. I use a GML 8200 uh, to scoop out quite a bit of the, of the of the junk that will be on the top of that snare when you hear it and uh, you can really get away with EQing these a lot and get a really extreme snare top sound that gives you a really in your face direct sound to go along with the big rooms um, you'll have both mics in at least in the SDX to to uh, to mess with and there's an Audix i5 on the bottom as well which is kind of in the vein of an already EQ'd 57 gets, gets a nice snap and crack out of the bottom and the nice swish of the snare wires. Inside the kick, we have an Audix D6, uh, which I love. Uh, it's a very heavily EQ'd mic. I use it for the top end and some of the lows. There's an RE20 in there, which is a classic, classic kick drum mic, just big, flat, almost boring until you EQ the hell out of it. And then we have a, a Shure Beta 91. That's just a boundary mic that sits inside the drum. It's got a very characteristic slap to it as well. Um, it's pre-EQ'd, there's a little mid scoop switch on it that takes out the low mids. Um, and those are probably sitting, I would say, eight to 10 inches back from the beater. We, you know, I do spend some time listening to make sure we're not too close to the beater because you just will kill the life of the drum if you're too close to the to the inside. Um, and then there's sub kicks on the outside and that captures all the sub lows of, of the drum and gives you nice sustain and kind of the outside picture of the drum. I typically like to top and bottom mic the toms because uh, the top is, is great. I mean, that's the most critical part. It's where you get the attack and quite a bit of low end. Just gives it a little more full tone, captures the drum in a little bit bigger picture like maybe you'd hear in the room. Sometimes you use it in a mix, sometimes you don't. I usually do. I usually keep the bottom mic about 10 or 12 dB below the top mic depending on the levels. Critical stuff, I mean I, that extra low end is, is big, especially gets a lot of sustain that you may not capture as much with the top mic. It'll be there, but with the bottom mic it's really emphasized. There's a lot of room mics set up as well. I think we have five. You know, the different positions in the pool, the different types of mics will give you really different sounds. Like we have a, a set of Rode mics in uh, like really out in the corner. So it's right there in the bass trap. And if you listen to those room mics, you'll find a lot of really low subby uh, boom, bastic sounds in those. I have a couple of ribbon mics set up in front of the drum kit and also a set of ribbon mics in the back of the room, but like above the drum kit. 
and they pick up really different things and because it's ribbons it's a uh, whole different set of characteristics then we have a set of tube mics in front of the kit but also kind of above the drum kit and finally i think we have a it's treated like a stereo set but it's like pretty much under the toms so that you uh, would get a really close to the drum kit or inside the drum kit ambience i think we have 28 tracks going at the same time so that should be something to choose from it's not necessarily a good idea to use all the ambience mics at the same time could be but that's not really my intention my intention is to give possibilities like i like this one if you blend in the other one maybe you'll lose what you like about the first one so it's a little bit of picking and choosing once you start to do your mixes they're not set up in like a quarter inch perfection as to everything being perfect because it's not really how i think things should necessarily be done i believe i'm believe in letting random shit happen and if it's you know the way you determine if it's good or bad is does it sound like music if it sounds like music it is music and and that should be what determines whether something is good or bad so um, so there will be some random sounding things in there probably hopefully but that will you know bring out something you wouldn't expect Yeah, the ambient mics was something I, I knew, that's one of the reasons I wanted to come to Sonic Ranch was because their selection of mics is so incredible. Besides the main drum overheads, which are 451s, AKGs, we have a set of Telefunk and Elam 251s over the drums. And uh, those are big, wide pickup patterns, not as fast as the 451. It capture a lot of ambience just for an overhead mic, so it's a different option. Far back, way up. I mean, I think we have those mics close to 20 feet in the air, if not um, higher. Uh, we have a set of Neumann M50s, which are a large diaphragm Omni uh, vintage Neumann that's just, to me, one of the absolute best room mics ever to exist. They just capture a low end coming off the drums, even up high, that you just won't even believe, and the cymbals sound unreal. Um, we have a set of U67s. I think they've been modded uh, by Stephen Paul. They sound incredible. I've used them on two records before as room mics. Damn. Damn, nailed it. And then we have a close AEA R88 ribbon in the center of the kit uh, doing an XY thing. So you can get, get really punchy room there and a little bit more cymbal control because they sit low to the ground. And then I have something I do with with uh, boundary mics, usually a Beta 91, but this time we used a Crown PZM. We set it on the floor in front of the kit, maybe about six or seven feet back. It captures a lot of the crispiness off the snare wire, big low end from the kick. And then we have another one further back in the room that really does the same thing, but with a longer decay. And that's why that's there. It's just things, this is things that I do when I track records that I use in my mixes, it's all there. I myself am gonna, am gonna make the, the drum kit sound as amazing as possible with you know the least amount of mics really is going to be the goal because you want you don't want all the phasing and then you add in you know whether it be the 251s or the m50s you can add in your own amount of ambience or your own your own vibe there but yeah absolutely i would not recommend using 40 mics at once you want those shells to sound amazing and then you add in the ambience where you want it and what you need <laughs> 